Howdy folks, just here doing a uh, ball joint video. Uh, I'm going to be using this uh, Matco ball joint press and uh, this thing is like king ding a ling. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, you won't ever break this thing. Although I think I did manage to bend it unfortunately, but the uh, part number is BJP18100. And uh, it's quite a kit. It's mainly designed for your light duty uh, pickups, uh, light duty diesels, I should say, so your heavy duty pickups. But um, there you go. And obviously, this 2000 to 2013 Dodge, that's pretty much equivalent, uh, I believe, in your ball joint sizes, if I remember right, to the uh, 99 through, um, well, I think even back further, like your 93 through. Uh, Let's see, 2009, 2010 Ford Super Duties. So, uh, yeah, so I'm using a Super Duty, it works. And this is what it looks like. Um, I mean, this thing is heavy. It probably weighs 15, 15 pounds by itself. Um, and you've got these pins that adjust, and so you can get more leverage. And basically it's designed you just throw your impact on here and suck these down. And then you got all your caps for your installer, your installer pieces, your and everything that just go on these two ends. So in a second here, I'm gonna get this thing mounted up on the knuckle and uh clamped and ready and just uh do a video of this thing working. So yeah, it's uh a very nice piece compared to like one of these guys that uh, you get at O'Reilly's or AutoZone or you know any of your big big bot stores where you just have this rinky dink C-clamp. I just grabbed this when I was in town you know just in case but um, yeah there's no reason I'd even use this thing. So in fact I think last time I did ball joints on this I broke the C-clamp on one of these rental ones ended up having to take it to took it to a friend's shop and pressed them out last time but anyways be catch you back here in a second hey folks got this humdinger set up on here and uh now we're just going to uh yeah hopefully impact and pop this thing out the first one we did was super super seized up in there um, on this on this knuckle that one's all done but hopefully this one comes out easy so we'll see these have been in here about somewhere around 65 70 thousand miles the lowers are toast the uppers are still actually fine but place them all all right so let's get uh, let's get to impacting all right let's see if it just pops it nice and easy Look at that. All right, we'll keep going at it for and get that joint all the way out. There she blows. Oh, this thing's a freaking whale. Would have helped if we backed it out a little bit first, but you know. Here, I'll get the impact and reverse reverse out this guy. There we go. Maybe hopefully that's enough. Probably not. Just take it all the way back out. There we go. And there it is. One piece of shit. So, yeah, that thing works 
really, really well compared to any press I've ever used. So if you got a, a ton of coin or you're a mechanic and use them every day, I would recommend. Uh, yeah, so that's that. But uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch up with you later. Okay, figured I'd show you guys the lower on this side. And this is definitely not a uh, one person job setting this freaking thing up when you have the knuckles separated. You know, if you have it on a ram pickup where, you know, it's in the actual axle, um, that would be easier. So, anyways, we're going to hit this one out too and hopefully it pops. So, let's see what we get. Let's go for it. There she is. And let's keep pressing. All right. We're going to have to reset our cup. It looks like it moved down when it popped a little bit. So now we're actually pressing a little on this cup. So we'll back it out. But anyways, that's, uh, that's that. So catch up with you later. I'm going to show you guys pressing in a joint. Uh, there's an upper joint going in. Uh, did put some anti-seas on there, so we'll see how it presses it in. So let's go ahead and go nice and slow. And uh, hopefully it pops right on in. Good. Keep yep, keep going. Looks like we're almost seated in there. So I'm gonna kick this up one more. All right, go for it. I think that's in there. So yeah, should be good. Get a little light in there. Yeah, should be in there. So there you go. Easy, easy with this thing. Howdy, folks. So I'm just going to put the uh, knuckle on with the new ball joints. And uh, yeah, in case anybody hasn't seen how one of these comes apart, but I'm sure everybody and their mom has, maybe not. So here we go. And as always, put a, I used a liberal amount of uh, anti-seize to keep things moving for when I got to do this again in another 70,000 miles. And there we are. So we'll uh, get our... Our nuts torqued. I believe this one's like 69, 70 foot pounds, and this guy down here is 150. So we'll torque them to spec. I'm gonna hit this one to 69 first, then hit that to 69, then come back and do the final torque to 150 on this one. And then we'll obviously put our pin in for our castle nut, and uh, that'll be that. And throw our axle shafts in and get this thing put back together. So, yeah.
ball joints. Exciting. All right. Catch you later. Howdy, folks. Uh, here, wrapping up some uh, ball joints. So, got the new ball joints in. Um, no, um, I guess, real issues, but it did get hung up on something that I feel like kind of a dummy for. But um, I'm sure I'm not the only one. There's no way I'm the only one. So, anyways, got some new, uh, got the new shocks in here. Um, you know, re-greased all the bearings while this crap was out. Cleaned everything real well. Um, this, the hub assembly on the other side is on its way out. This one was replaced last, last winter. Um, it failed, that Moog assembly. There's a video back there about that and how sloppy it is. It's nuts. But that other side is definitely on its way out. Um, that um, pinion, uh, let's see, the seal at the carrier on that other side is probably starting to leak a little bit. But I'm going to, because uh, it's just got a little bit of, uh, you know, build up at that other axle tube when I pulled her off for sure. Uh, replaced the um, axle shaft tubes here at the end of the tube. Uh, for those dust seals and uh, torqued everything down adjusted the damn freedom track bar uh, had to grind basically or not even grind I had to cut those jam nuts there down I shaved about a quarter uh, probably about a quarter inch off of each one of those so now I've got some more room there to for adjustment as I needed got to um, adjust those set screws a little bit and uh, anyway, so doing that, and um, I'm going to probably just add a little bit of gear oil to the diff just to get it back up to uh, level because it definitely drained quite a bit out. I'm probably a little bit sloped or something here and uh, just get it back up to that fill line. So um, yeah, other than that, ball joints went in good, but I got hung up for, I don't know, you might say a day until I just... Kind of took a step back and thought about it. So basically, what we got going on here, let's grab this light, is we've got right there on the top, hang on, right there on the top, we've got the caster shim. It's like a two, I think it's a two degree shim. And so what had happened when I knocked out the knuckle, that had gotten pushed down in there. And so basically, what I'm talking about, um, this piece here had gotten shoved to the point it was flush. This ring was flush with the top of here. And so when I pushed this knuckle back up in there with the joint, it basically pinched it too early. And then when I torqued the bottom and the sequence to spec, right, hit, you know, hit it and then brought it up, I couldn't even turn this knuckle at all with this the lower nut tightened to uh, 35 foot pounds so anyways it took me a while to figure that out but got it torqued her down good to go um yeah so those are the new kryptonite ball joints like i said this hub assembly is definitely on its way out i wonder if you can hear it on the camera yeah so you can kind of hear some ticking the other side just runs smooth so it's something in there is not right at all so um, yep probably uh, come March February I'm just gonna budget and buy a kryptonite one of these because these Moog ones just don't hold up either that or I'll throw a Timken in it or a factory motorcraft the factory motorcraft ones lasted the longest so I probably just go with that put some uh, new mud flaps on because the old ones were cracked broken so new mud flaps and um so that's that so here in a minute i'll catch back up with you guys and show you the new tire setup uh it is freaking awesome i'll tell you i i set one on here and made sure i didn't have enough clearance with the mud flap it's tight but i think i should so you know again that is the old the old look and there you go you can see some of the new ones there but um so yeah it's been on there forever. I'm, I've hated the, the you know aluminum chrome anything like that. So 
I'm getting rid of that and gonna get the new ones mounted up here probably in a minute because I've got an alignment appointment on Thursday. So get this thing in, get it aligned, new tires, fresh ball joints, and hopefully be good to go for a while. Yeah, so anyways, I'll catch back up with you here and show you guys what the um, new tire uh, tire setup looks like here. I don't know if I'm going to mount the rears tonight because i got to get, get inside and do some reading, but uh, uh, at least get these fronts on here and uh, get it all torqued down and uh, wrapped up on the front end. And then next week or sometime soon, I've got to do the glow plugs, so I'm going to get into that as well. All right, catch up with you in a minute.